If everyone is ready and willing, we can begin our session today. It's going to be a fun session. I think you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed preparing it. <laughs> so let's all uh, focus on our breath or a couple of breaths and take three deep breaths together. And with the deep in breath. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Here we are, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Today we'll take a second look at the second agreement. Don't take anything personally. It's a good idea not to take anything personally, but to actually put that into our lives is a challenge. So today we're going to look at a really fun way, I think, to put this agreement we can make with ourselves into practice. So everyone speak up when you have any questions or, or comments. Here we go. Chapter four, every mind is a world. Don't take anything personally. Let's use the power of imagination. Don't know about you, but I've always had an active imagination. So let's draw on the power of imagination to create a dream together knowing it's a dream. Imagine a gigantic mall with hundreds of movie theaters. Not like any we've ever been to. This one is huge. Hundreds of movie theaters. You look around to see who's playing. You notice a movie that has your name on it. Hmm. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. You go inside the theater and it's empty, except for one person. See who's playing. Very quietly, trying not to interrupt, you sit behind that person who doesn't even notice you. All that person's attention is on the movie. You look at the screen and what a big surprise. You recognize every character in the movie. Your mother, your father, brothers, sisters, if you have any, your beloved, your children, your friends, all on the big screen. And then you see the main character of the movie and it's you. <laughs> you are the star in this movie. You are the star of the movie and it's the story of you. The story of you. Well, it's a long story. Some of us have been around for a long time. So what's on the screen? Mostly what's on the screen is what's going on recently. And you're the star of it. And that person in front of you, well, it's also you watching yourself act in the movie. 
So this is our challenge for our imagination. We're in a dark movie theater. The screen is portraying the movie of our life. There is a person intently watching that movie, doesn't see anything else. And that person is ourselves. And we are also there in another capacity, sort of observing everything that's going on, seeing the projector and the light of the projecting light, projecting the movie on the screen. Of course, in this movie, the main character is just the way you believe you are. You wrote it. And so are all the secondary characters because you know the story of you just the way you see your life story and the way you tell everyone else too if you happen to be with someone else and the way you tell your story to yourself when you happen to be with yourself. After a while, you feel a little overwhelmed by everything you have just witnessed, or it gets boring. You decide to go to another theater. In this theater, there's also just one person who is watching a movie. She doesn't notice you when you sit beside her. You start watching the movie and you recognize all the characters. And now you are just a secondary character. This is the story of your mother's life. And she is the one who's watching the movie with all her attention. There she is, our dear mothers, in a movie, watching the story of their life, and we're there uh, at the same theater. Then you realize that your mother is not the same person who was in your movie. There's your mother up on the screen, but it's not the same person who was in your movie. The way she projects herself, is completely different in her movie. The way she believes she is, the way she shows up in her movie, not at all like it was in your movie. It's the way your mother wants everyone to perceive her. She shows up in her movie the way she wants people to perceive her. You know that it's not authentic. It's not authentic. She's just acting. But then you begin to realize that it's the way she perceives herself. She perceives herself. And it's kind of a shock because she perceives herself in a way that you can see it's not authentic. Then you notice the character who has your face is not the same person who is in your movie. <laughs> you say, ah, this isn't me. <laughs> That's not the authentic me in my mother's movie. But now you are seeing how your mother perceives you what she believes about you. And it's far from what you believe about yourself. I certainly had that experience with my mother. I knew she thought certain things about me. She thought I was just wonderful. And so proud of me. Could do no wrong. Well, mostly no wrong. But that's not exactly what I thought about myself. So her movie of me was not authentic and I knew it, but I was okay with it. And I was glad my mother saw me the way she saw me. So I was not about to uh, correct her. Then you see the character 
of your father, your son and your mother's movie, the way your mother perceives him. And it's not at all the way you perceive him. It's completely distorted. And so is her perception of all the other characters. Sometimes you've heard your mother and father talk about their life together, how they met perhaps, things they did together, and you saw how your mother perceived your father. Maybe it wasn't exactly the way you perceived him, but that was one of your family stories. So you accepted it. Isn't it amazing how we can accept two stories about a person that aren't in agreement and be okay with that? Your mother's story about your father and your story about your father. You see the way your mother perceives your beloved. And you even get a little upset with your mom. How dare she, you say to yourself, you stand up and you're out of there. That's right, how my mother saw, well, I've had a couple beloveds in my life and <laughs> The first one, I knew how she saw her. <laughs> I know how she saw the second one. How dare she, out of there. The next theater's playing the story of your beloved. Now you see the way your beloved perceives you and the character is completely different from the one who was in your movie and the one who was in your mother's movie. So you're in your beloved's theater. There you are, but not the same as in your movie or your mother's movie. Your beloved, she sees you in such a special way. You can see the way your beloved perceives your children. The way your beloved perceives your family, the way they perceive your friends. Maybe they perceive some friends as valuable good friends to have, and maybe they perceive other friends as not as amenable. How your beloved sees your friends. You can see the way in which your beloved wants to project him, suffer herself. See the way they want to project themselves. And it's not the way you perceive your beloved at all. The certain characteristics of your beloved, you know it's so important to them that they project themselves that way. And yet, in a way, you know that's distorted and you perceive them in the way they more truly are in your movie. Then you decide to leave that movie and go to your children's movie. Oh my goodness, when is it ever going to end? <laughs> <laughs> you see the way your children see you, the way they see grandma, and grandpa, and you can hardly believe it. I don't know about you, I have two daughters, and I know one daughter sees me one way, and the other daughter sees me a different way. Either one sees me exactly as I, I see myself, and I happen to like the way one daughter uh, sees me in her movie and the other daughter, the way she sees me, well, that's the way she is. That's the way she sees me. So our children in their movies see uh, my parents, their grandma and grandpa, or other grandma and grandpa. I can hardly believe it. Then you watch the movies of your brothers and sisters, of your friends, 
and you find that everybody is distorting all the characters in their movie. All distorting. After seeing all of these movies, you decide to return to the first theater. You see your own movie once again. Take a new look at it. You look at yourself acting in the movie. There you are up on the screen. The light is shining from the projector. And you are still there, the only one in the theater seated and watching intently. You're acting the movie, but you no longer believe anything you're watching. Well, maybe you do, or maybe you don't, or maybe you just have a thread of doubt about it because you've seen what movies are like and how movies distort things. And if everybody else is movie, your mother, children, your beloved, they, they're all distorting things. Hmm, you have to wonder, maybe there's something in my movie that I shouldn't take so seriously. So maybe you no longer believe not anything, but everything. You no longer believe everything you're watching, maybe. Maybe you no longer believe your own story, or at least aspects of it, or parts of it or some bit of it. So is this true for us? Is this true for us? Because you can see that it's just a story. It's your story. It's up there on that screen. There you are in the theater and watching a part of yourself sitting there intently watching your story, believing everything in it knowing it's true, but another part of you is just in the theater, watching the projection light, watching the screen, and watching that aspect of you, believing and intensely watching your story. I think I have a little exercise planned for now because these, this way of holding things I think might be kind of tough for people to internalize. And just hearing about it may not be enough for us to internalize this idea that the way we hold ourselves in our mind is just a story. All right. Are we ready to try a little exercise? Sure. <laughs> Let's try a little exercise and see if we can uh, internalize this. I call it stepping back from your own mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read some excerpts from the Tao Te Ching that I use in my, uh, my daily meditation. And let's see if we can use these excerpts and a new idea of ourselves in the movie theater to get some perspective on ourselves. Here we go. Can you coax your mind from its wandering and return to the original oneness? So there you are in the movie theater. You can see your mind upon the screen. It's wandering here, it's wandering there. There you are watching it down there. Can that part of you that came into the theater coax your mind up there on the screen from all that wandering and return to the original oneness? What's the original oneness? It's just when you're in the present moment. So when you're in the present moment, there you are in the theater. You see the light shining on the screen. You see the screen with your mind story and you see that part of yourself watching your story. So that's how you return to the original oneness by being totally present and what's going on in the moment. Can 
you coax your mind from its wandering and return to the original oneness. Can you let your body become supple as a newborn child? There's your body up there on the screen. Supple means allowing the energy to flow through the chakras up and down. Can you see the energy in your body up there on the screen flowing through your body from bottom to top chakra so that your body just becomes free and supple as a newborn child? Can you see that in the movie? Can you cleanse your inner vision until you see nothing but the light? What is the light? It's that projection light projecting on the screen. Can you cleanse your inner vision until you see nothing but that projection light shining on the screen? Yes, the screen is still there with the story of your life. A part of you is down there seated intently watching it, but another part of you has your focus on that projection light. And you see nothing but that light. And seeing nothing but that light, yes, your mind story is going on, but you cleanse your inner vision by keeping your attention on that light that shines the story. Are you with me? So from now on, when something comes up from you that bothers you, you can jump over into the movie theater of your life. There you are, down there seated, watching your mind go over its story again and again and again. But a part of you has focus just on the light. And in that sense, you cleanse your inner vision because your focus just on that projection light. Can you love people and lead them without imposing your will? There they are up on the screen. Yes, you love them, your children, your beloved, your friends. Can you love them? Can you lead them? And as you watch the movie, can you notice when you have an impulse to oppose your will and just allow your will to step back, step back so that you just love people and lead them by example in that movie without imposing your will. That's got to be by far the hardest thing to do. <laughs> Can you love people and lead them without imposing your will? I'm just thinking as a parent, that's like the ultimate, that's where I want to get, or making it a goal. And I mean, it's always a goal, but you know being mindful about it in every single action would be very powerful. Can you love people? Can you lead them how? By example, without having some agenda that you wish to impose on others. Maybe it means uh, going out of your movie and over into their movie and seeing how in their movie they see things. So there you are, you're in their movie, and there they're seated, they're watching their movie. Can you even love the person in their movie as they see themselves and see that they're just okay the way they are in their movie? They're just okay and you don't need to do anything to fix them. So you don't need to impose your will.
Jumping back. I think there's a there's just a there's a pause in the moment when we're trying to observe their movie. And for me, at least in our practice, Steve, when you brought it to us, the VP's practice, the nonviolent communications empathy practices to be in that loving state of compassion and guess the feelings and needs behind their story. I think that's one way to segue towards the, the supportive empathy, the sacred silence of holding that sacred space for that individual. And we might be, you know, in a context of particularly family relationships, it's so hard, challenging, uh, but the conscious effort of practicing the feelings and needs guesses provides that momentum of that beautiful, separate, but yet loving, you know, being of light that we can try to strive for. Anyway, just a thought. It's a good thought. Now these exercises that we're doing may appeal to you or, or may not. But if this idea appeals to you and is helpful to you, then great. If it's helpful for, uh, for you to visualize yourself in that other person's movie, so that as Sam said, you could start to get in touch, well, gee, what are they feeling in this moment? They're in their movie, what are they, what are they feeling? Happy, sad, angry, resentful, frustrated? And what's, what's the underlying universal need from which that feeling springs? A need for respect, perhaps a need to be heard, a need to be loved. And trying to look at that by uh, putting yourself in their movie theater. Thank you, Sam. All right, back in our own theater, can you deal with the most vital matters by letting events take their course? We're in our theater. There's things happening on the screen. There's a vital matters happening on the screen. Oh, here comes some inconsequential matters, minor things happening on the screen. Now your attention on the screen is more vital. Life and death matters. Can you, watching the screen, not the one sitting down there so absorbed, but standing back, can you deal with those vital matters by letting events in the movie take their course, letting the movie play out. Now, don't forget, you are in the movie. So in that movie, you were there uh, letting events take their course, but part of events taking their course is you yourself doing what's yours to do. It's just you're not imposing your will on the course on the, the course of events. So there you are watching. You see vital matters, inconsequential matters, and you let those events take their course. And there you are in the movie, doing what's yours to do. And when you do what's yours to do, without interfering with the flow of events, you're at peace. You've done what's yours to do. And you deal with the most vital matters and the, the least vital matters by letting events take their course and playing your proper place in it. Finally, can you step back from your own mind and thus understand all things? Can you see that that's exactly what we've been doing in this exercise? We've been stepping back from our own minds. Our own minds are up there on the screen. And the story goes on and on. And there we are seated, so absorbed in our story. As a matter of fact, sometimes we get these stories and they repeat again and again in our minds. We're upset and outraged by something that happened. 
we see the way it should have happened and the way it did happen. And we want to fix things and we start making plans and visualizing how we're going to fix things and what we should say and what we're going to say. How we're going to make things right, how we're going to prove the other person is wrong and our story goes on and on in our mind. So part of us down there seated is absorbed in that. I know that sometimes I get absorbed in my story and I just hear it going again and again in my mind. I don't want to hear it anymore. I've already heard it. But my mind keeps repeating that story again and again. And there I am sitting down, absorbed it. Can you step back from your own mind and be in the movie? And instead of focusing on what's on the screen, your mind going over and over, can you again focus on the light, that projection light that projects on the screen? So that uh, as you were there in the movie watching yourself, you can just allow a small smile to creep up on your lips as you watch your story unfolding again and again, and you are changing your attention to the light, the light that projects your story. So you can be at peace with your story going over again and again, never mind, that's how the mind works. You can be at peace with your obsession with airing it again and again, because you step back, your focus is on the light. Steve, I just wanted to share sometimes physically, I think it's helpful to what we do in the very beginning and at the very end. We just take a you know, deep, mindful breath and then let it out. I think that for me seems to be the physical initiation of the concept, what we're talking about of taking a step back from our minds. Taking a deep breath. I agree, Sam. Now let's visualize in our movie theater, who's taking the deep breath. I don't think it's that part of me that's sitting in, sitting in the seat, watching the story and going over and over and again and again and again, and over and over. Rather, I think it's that other part of me that went into the theater, is watching the lights, starting to smile, and then naturally, without even having to to consider taking that deep breath, which is a way of stepping back from our own minds so that through the breath, deep breath, we can refocus on the light. The story's still there, but we step back from it. What's really important is the light, the light. That's the end of the little exercise. Did it help any of you to internalize some of these concepts we discussed? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about them. That was a great exercise. I really, yeah. it. you know, I understand the concepts, but this one makes them quite clear. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Any other comments on the exercise? Were you able to internalize it? Yeah, there's a process in IFS, Internal Family Systems, that talks about all these protector parts, right? And there's a firefighter part, there's a manager part, and there's an internal child part who's trying to come out and express and, and there's a higher self that can give guidance to the inner child part. And if we can learn to step back and be the calm, collected, courageous, sacred, healing self, it's very fascinating to see and how all these protector parts, the manager part, the firefighter, and the child part can be held in a way that's 
fully present and warm and nurturing for, for the growth. Yes, Sam, I agree. And I've heard these stories too. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, there are stories about different aspects of ourself. Yeah. And of course, many different uh, humanitarians have come up with these ways of looking at different parts of ourself. For me personally, I am a very visual and imaginative person. Uh -huh. So when I read intellectually about some of these things, I agree with them, but somehow they don't go inside me. I don't internalize them. As I was preparing uh, these exercises and working on this presentation for the last couple of weeks, and I I got this uh, movie theater visualization internalized within me. Yeah. Something came up in my life. Something a loved one did that I thought was outrageous. Outrageous. I thought they'd learned their lesson. They did something and I trusted them and, and they did it again. How could they do that? My mind was outraged and went over the story and the person sitting down there in the seat just couldn't let go. It went over and over and over and again. And then I found, after working a bit on this exercise, that doing this exercise and visualizing the movie theater helped me yeah. to step back from my own mind and allowed me to be able to bring this image of the movie theater up to help me not take myself so seriously. So if you're that sort of person, I, I hope that might be of assistance to you to be able to recall the visualization when, when you need it. Amen, thank you for sharing that. That was effective to hear that. Every mind is a world. <laughs> Every mind is a world. Now that you know that all the acting you did your whole life, in effect, was really for nothing. What? All the acting I did was really for nothing? Because nobody perceives you the way you want to be perceived. They perceive you the way they want to perceive you. Well, I'm not sure all the acting we did was really for nothing, but maybe it didn't have the 100% effect that we hoped it would have. Because we were just in touch with our own story. We were seated, sitting in the theater of our movie, watching our, our story uh, come out intently, the way we hoped people would see us. And we just didn't have the awareness that people weren't perceiving us the way we want to be perceived and maybe couldn't. It's not part of human nature. We didn't perhaps have that perspective until we got a little more mature. You can see that all the drama that happens in your movie, oh my God. I've had some drama in my movie you wouldn't believe. If I was a gossiper, I could start gossiping now and just tell you about a lot of dramatic things that happened in my movie. But all that drama isn't really noticed by anybody around you. Not really. You know all that political drama we hear about on the social media? How people are like this and like that and they're this and they're that. But there you are in your home. Yes, you're watching the social media, but you look outside and there's the trees and the birds and you're not really noticing that drama. Same thing with your drama. People around you aren't really noticing it. It's obvious that everybody's attention is focused on their own movie. That's the key. They don't even notice when you sit beside them in their theater. 
you can go over in your children's theater and sit right beside them and watch them see their movie up there and the way you look in the movie and the things they're going to tell you and the things they have told you. They don't even notice you're there. There you are. The actors have all their attention on their story. And that is the only reality they live in. So when you can look at that reality, perhaps of a loved one who has gotten under your skin and see that, well, they're doing the best they can and this is the way they see reality and the things that are important to you just don't register with them. They're just assuming that that's the way parents are and they live with a wholly different outlook and that's their reality. The things that are so important to them, you think, my goodness, isn't that uh, silly or that's not important for me, but it's their reality. Your parents' reality, where they live, your friends' reality. Their attention is so hooked by their own creation that they don't even notice their own presence, the one who is observing their movie. Now, we, of course, having been through this lesson today, are evolved. We know how to watch our movie. We know how to watch others' movie. So we have to be aware that we're, we're watching the movie of someone else, their attention is so hooked by their creation up there on the screen, they don't even notice their own presence sitting down there, the one who is observing their movie. God bless them, they're doing their best, just like we are. They're not aware that what their story is is just a movie, we're aware of it now, they're not. So we can just have a little smile, head back to our own movie, place ourselves in the back of the theater. There we are down there watching our movie and where is our attention? On the projection light. It's a dark room. We see the projection light. We have less focus now on what's on the screen, what a part of us is so intensely absorbed in, no. We've now learned through this visualization to focus on the light. In the present moment, we've cleansed our inner vision and now we see nothing but the light and we're at peace. That concludes my uh, prepared remarks for the day. I want to remind you of something which uh, Rev. Russ asked me uh, to remind you and also uh, Patty Wilcox, our finance director. And that is, you have an opportunity to, uh, to give to our church and to experience the gratitude of having given, you can use a text message, text GIV, use Donate Now on our website or mail a, a check-in. See, that was really wonderful. Uh, I hope it stays up on the website for a while because I have a feeling this is a, a thing to listen to when we get ourselves in trouble emotionally, just to go back and go through this exercise again with that situation in mind, because it was, it was really, really, really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. I am recording this and I will put it up on YouTube and post it on the website. I'll also send out an email with a link to the YouTube. Good. 
basically. So that's not going to go away, right? No, the the you. I don't know where YouTube gets all the money to store all this stuff that gets sent. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it's because the multi-zillionaire uh, Google owns YouTube, and uh, mm -hmm. I guess they just buy more and more uh, storage computers to store all the YouTube. So it's going to persist. Yeah. Thank you. That was really really good. Good. I certainly profited from it, so I, I wish mm -hmm. you to profit from it as well. Uh, Della, you always like to talk about things a little bit. Did you have anything you wish to share before we close? Yeah, yes, I had one thing to say about stepping away from the mind. <clears throat> which is that I guess you can naturally step away from your mind when you realize that thoughts are nonsensical or unnecessary. And if you realize that in most cases your thoughts are are a disturbance to you. Yes, I hear you. One of the other verses of the Tao Te Ching that comes to mind after I, uh, I hear you listen to your remarks is that uh, nonsense for some makes perfect sense uh, to another aspect of ourselves. So what is nonsense, let's say, to our intellectual outlook on the world? It just seems like nonsense. May make perfect sense to another aspect of ourselves. Maybe it's the one seating in the movie theater who's looking at the story of the life and notices through an intellectual examination, well, this is all nonsense. You know, I'm, life is real. My thoughts are real. I know what I believe, and uh, thank God I can see the truth out there. Everyone else has got it all distorted, but I can see the truth. <laughs> Mine's not distorted. I hope not anyway. I see the truth. Maybe that's the uh, part of ourselves that's seated in the movie theater. It sees it as nonsense and intellectual gibberish and moves on to tell a story about it, how people make intellectual gibberish and expect us to believe it. And there's a story that goes up on the screen and starts repeating again and again about uh, how people want us to believe things that don't make sense and so on. And yet maybe there's another part of us, the part of us that's standing in the back observing, saying, well, maybe it doesn't make sense, but somehow it feels right. As I focus on the light, as I focus on the light, it feels right. Anyway, that's how I uh, would uh, interpret things. Della, do you have any further observations you'd like to um, offer? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, when I talk about things making, things not making any sense, I mean, in the sense that if you try to intellectualize spiritual teachings and if you, if you try to intellectualize life itself, it will not make any sense to the logical mind in a way because to understand it on purely an intellectual level is to not understand it or to miss it completely. But as, as you were saying earlier, to internalize it is to that's when you begin to actually understand it. Mm. Yes, maybe to actually understand means simply to stand under it, stand back from it, not get absorbed in the intellectual 
understanding, Lord, why don't I understand this? I can't figure this out. It doesn't make any sense. It's nonsense. No, perhaps our challenge is not to understand it in that intellectual sense, but rather to stand back, understand, stand under. Just like as we enter the theater, we see ourselves there trying to understand, figure things out, and we yet are standing under or standing back and just seeing the light with a little smile on our faces, seeing the light and noticing, uh, as you point out, well, maybe understanding's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> maybe the larger issue for me is experiencing my peace so that I'm always bathed in that projector light whenever I choose to be. And that I can uh, be in life and peace. Any final comments before we, we close for the day? Well, I think that's all from me. You guys have been so great. Thank you for being so supportive. Well, thank you for the exercise. It was great. That the thing I think for me is to is to go into remember to go into somebody else's theater and not just see the the one snarky remark that you just got that really messed up your day, but to go to, to go see their whole picture. Where are they at this point in time? And to see that what's coming from another person is real and valid in their own life picture at that point in time. Uh, and it just makes it a little easier. And that's the, that's the epitome of the second agreement. You can't take it personally because it has nothing to do with you. It's in the whole full picture of that other person's life. So that visualization is really it's really so helpful. Yes, that snarky remark that ticked you off. Hi. Maybe they didn't mean it as a snarky remark. They were just repeating something they thought was obvious. And they wonder, why did Susan get so upset about that? <laughs> <laughs> Not the intent. <laughs> Marina, did you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, go ahead. It's our turn to talk. Go ahead. Like My name is Joy. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Hi. I got a shirt. You sure do. It's okay. really nice. Very nice. Beautiful shirt. I, I got some ears. <laughs> you got ears? Mine are bigger. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, it's good to see you guys. And I was, uh, I'm going to put you down, babes, okay? <clears throat> I was listening, but it is quite, um, it, it works against the serenity of the class. <laughs> I video to be on, so I wanted to make sure to be, uh, to not distract. And so um, I'm gonna try to attend as much as, no, I'm going to attend as much as I can, um, but I'll probably be in the background with the video off. And Wonderful. Thank you. I always wanted to be here. I love class so much. Um, but with shutting down and, and childcare and all that other stuff, it was very hard to even get, um, you know, here on time. But I've been listening from YouTube, so I'm with you every single time. Well, thank you, Marina. You know, folks, we need to close because the church service is starting in about five minutes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. See you next week. We're going to close uh, by making the sound of oh. all together. Ready? Three deep conscious breaths. And the deep in breath. Um. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Okay.
Here we go. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye. You too.